Hey, I'm sorry uh, this is going to be long, but it is complicated, and if you're interested in ACORN, it's worth it. This election fraud story is getting a lot of attention, especially since John McCain talked about it in the last debate. So I'm going to talk to you about just how serious this issue is. I'm going to discuss the fake voter registrations and the busing of homeless voters. ACORN is an activist group. One of the things that they do is register voters. They hire people and they pay them, I think, $8 an hour to go out and find people go up to them higher. You register to vote and register them. It's a big operation going on in a lot of states with a lot of employees. Some of these employees decided that the easy, lazy thing to do would be to fill out these forms themselves with fake information, turn them in, and get paid as if they had done real work. It's sort of a conventional kind of workplace fraud. ACORN then handed the forms over to the government and the fake ones turned up in the screen that the government operates um, when they just check the information. So they turned up as bad. Some ACORN employees cheated and some fake registrations got sent in. Is this a bad thing? Well, yeah, of course it's a bad thing. ACORN wasted money on bad employees and the government wasted their time processing these bad registrations. Those things are bad in a small way because waste was created. But what about the big bad? The big bad thing, has the election been rigged as a result of this? And that's where the Republican spin machine comes in to tell us, yes, the election is rigged because of this. But in saying that, they want you to take this really big leap of logic. They want you to assume that on election day, actual human beings are going to show up and say, Hi, I'm John Smith. I am, you know, I am, my name is Mickey Mouse in one case, and I am here to vote. That is what it would take if democracy was going to be undermined. Real votes, not just fake registrations. Well, that's kind of a huge and pretty stupid leap that the Republicans want us to take when you think about it. I mean, here, start from the beginning. Pretend that you want to rig an election. Faking the registrations would be the first part and the easiest part. You just write them up and you send them in. The hard part is faking the votes after that. You would have to pull together an army of thousands of criminals to show up on election day and commit these crimes. And Republicans want you to sort of just assume that part, assume that there are so many people, and it really would take thousands, even tens of thousands, across the country for this kind of operation to be worth it in the first place, to have an effect, and assume that these people are going to deploy on election day in droves and commit all of these crimes. Well, I mean, if ACORN was building this, these people, this criminal army right now, we would know. We would know that it was happening because, well, they would get caught. I mean, first of all, there would have to be recruiters everywhere asking people, do you want to come in and, and be a criminal and fake your votes? And, uh, you know, and when they ask the wrong person, they would eventually get turned into the police. I mean, to do something this big, it would get out. The FBI would make them a witness to indict the organization. The whole thing would go down in flames in a very public, undeniable disgrace. That kind of fraud would not get off the ground. Now, you could also fake votes through absentee ballot, which means not showing up in person, um, but it would be easier to trace. It would be much harder to do because you would still need to pick up all of those absentee envelopes at all of those tens of thousands of physical addresses that the absentee ballots would get mailed to. Does that make sense? Each absentee ballot gets mailed to an address and somebody's got to be there who's complicit in the fraud to, you know, hand it over to Acorn if Acorn was doing that. You know, you wouldn't need to be Sherlock Holmes to solve that kind of a huge conspiracy. Encyclopedia Brown could do it. Registration is nothing compared to the challenge of falsifying enough votes to swing an election. Also, if you were doing this, why would you use ACORN? ACORN, you may have not have heard of them before, but I have, because they're a long-standing mainstream organization that does work in a huge variety of areas on rights for the poor. If this was a real thing, it wouldn't be ACORN. In fact, there would be no organization. They would have no name, it would be anonymous, it would be covert and quiet. They wouldn't attract attention by turning in such obviously fake names as Mickey Mouse and the Dallas Cowboys, both of which have shown up. In fact, you wouldn't even hire those low-wage workers to go out in the street to begin with. You would write up the fake registrations yourself in a very controlled, 
office situation and then you would drop them in mailboxes all over the state and then you would hire your fake voter army and hope that they are also incredibly reliable and tight-lipped that nobody tells anybody about it. That's what it would take to rig the election with people. In other words, what ACORN is doing is either the stupidest, most inefficient, impossible way to rig an election, or it's an honest attempt to register voters, which some of their temporary employees have taken advantage of to make some money, and which will have no fraudulent effects. So, in short, the Republican accusations of vote rigging are really a deliberate attempt to undermine public confidence in Barack Obama, not only now before the election, but also next year when he's the president. Now, okay, we're already six minutes into this, but you know what? I have to bring up the other issue of busing the homeless because people like to connect these two things, or shall we say conflate these two things. See, another one of the things that voting activists do is drive these buses to homeless shelters. They pick up the homeless and they drive drive them to the polling places so that they can vote. That is real. It's been going on a long time. Is it wrong? Well, you tell me. Do the homeless people have the right to vote? Yes, they do. Do they have cars? No, no, they don't. They don't have the ability to exercise their right. The rights are infringed. There's a barrier. So the problem with giving them a ride is what? Now, Republicans are also complaining that the homeless have been coached excuse me, that they have been coached to vote Democratic. Again, the problem with that is what? You're allowed to campaign to everybody. You're allowed to go up to people's homes and tell them to vote for somebody, and you're allowed to go to a homeless shelter and tell them what you think they should vote for. You're also allowed to give them free rides to the polling place. The only thing that you can't do is force them, which is taken care of because voting is private. They can do whatever they want in the voting booth. Uh, and just to drive this home, if John McCain thought homeless people were inclined to vote for him, then he would be doing this, because this is normal campaigning. It happens all the time. Another accusation, one homeless guy in Ohio said he had never voted before because he was a felon and he thought that he wasn't allowed to vote. Oh boy, the right-wing media went nuts when this came out for days until somebody looked up the actual Ohio election law and discovered there is no law against felons voting. This guy was allowed to vote and somebody along the way had convinced him that he wasn't. Oops, another case of nothing being done wrong. In fact, something being done good. This guy voting for the first time because he didn't realize he had the right. Okay, another, and I'm not going to do this all night, but one more. Another accusation <laughs> is that the buses don't go to the nearest voting place where they should vote, but they cross state lines to a swing state. Ooh, that would be wrong. I have no defense of that. That is bad. All I have to say to that accusation is show me, guys, don't just say it, show me it happened, and I will be just as mad as you. But I don't expect it because the real point of all this uproar over homeless people voting is not about facts, it's not about proof, it's about inciting prejudice against the homeless. It's to rile up those of us who think that the homeless should not vote. This is not racial prejudice, this is class prejudice. People who think that the homeless should be invisible, faceless ghosts who have no influence. But you know what? The Constitution says that they are just as human as I am, they are just as American as I am, they should be treated equally, and they have the same one vote that I do. Any problem with that is fundamentally un-American. And I'll leave it at that.